Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, namaste, y'all. And namaste to all your internet yogis and yoginis out there. Thanks for joining me. We're here on uh, beautiful San Carlos Bay. Uh, there's Fort Myers Beach over in that direction. Sanibel over uh, in that direction. And then the beautiful Gulf of Mexico right out that way. So thanks for joining us on this lovely, lovely December morning. If you're watching this up north, I think there's some folks out there in Indianapolis. I'm supposed to say hi to you. Yay! <laughs> so uh, uh, obviously our weather is probably a bit better than yours right now. So we'll try and send some of that warmth right, right, through, the, uh, right through the Ethernet. So uh, thanks, everybody. Um, let's begin in a, in a sitting position with the intention to sit upright with the spine relatively erect. And just take a moment to roll your shoulders around, just checking in with your shoulders. Have you been holding a lot of tension there? And just beginning to create a little bit of gentle movement, just to heighten your awareness of the shoulders. And now squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears real tight. Squeeze, take a breath in, hold the breath for a moment, and then exhale and drop the shoulders. Notice the release in those muscles on top of the shoulders, the upper trapezius in particular. Now inhale, same thing, squeeze the shoulders up, clench the hands into fists. So now we're tensing up the shoulders, the arms, the hands. Take a breath in. Hold the breath. Feel the tension in the arms, the shoulders, and the hands. And then exhale. <sighs> Let it go. Take an easy breath in and out. And once again, squeeze the shoulders up, clench the hands into fists. And this time, squeeze your eyes tightly shut and clench your jaw, kind of prune up the face. And then exhale. And just notice sensations from those areas of the body. And then letting your hands rest on your knees or in your lap with the palms turned upwards towards the sky in a rather receptive gesture. Closing the eyes, and now consciously relaxing the muscles of the face. Let your forehead smooth out. Let your jaw muscles relax so that there's a little bit of space between upper and lower teeth. If you'd like, you can bring the tip of the tongue up to the roof of the mouth, just behind the upper teeth. It's a little energetic connection. And as you breathe, see if you can now direct your breath a little bit more against the back of the throat. And feel the air as it goes down the back of the throat and into the lungs. And if you are a regular yoga practitioner and you're familiar with the Ujjaya breath, you can employ that now. Relaxing the belly. Let your breath go deeper into the abdomen. See if you can send your inhalation all the way down behind your belly button. As you exhale, engaging the abdominal muscles just lightly, drawing the belly in just slightly to help send the breath back out once again. So the belly expands as we breathe in and contracts as we breathe out. and tuning in to the coming and going of the breath. 
Feel the air across the tip of the nose, the nostrils, or the lips. Feel the air caressing the back of the throat. And with each inhalation, aware of drawing in not just the fresh air, but also imagine yourself being able to draw your attention inwards along with the breath. We spend the vast amount of our time with our attention flowing outwards. We send our awareness out to sort of grasp onto sensory objects, things that we see. And so very often our attention, most of the time, the attention is, is removed from the body. So for this hour or so together, I invite you to reverse that, to allow your attention to be more inwards than outwards. Notice, for instance, where your body is resting down against the ground or the floor or the carpet. You can probably even get a little sense of what's beneath you, the texture, the temperature, the softness or hardness. Notice also where different parts of the body rest against each other. Feel that sense of touch or pressure. And expanding your awareness out to the whole surface of the skin feeling even more subtle sensations, like where your clothing rests against your skin, or feeling warmth or cool, or the movement of air against the skin. And likewise, beginning to feel more of what's happening in the depths of the body, not just the surface. Notice if there's any particular areas of tension or discomfort that are calling for your awareness. And take a moment to ask your body, are there any places that need attention? Too often we, because we are in this country primarily externally motivated, too often we neglect things that are going on internally. Especially emotional tensions from various uncomfortable situations that are unresolved. We had an unhappy conversation with a family member or a coworker or whatever. There wasn't resolution and we walk away from that circumstance still a bit tense about it. And so our shoulders might still be tight or our belly or wherever the chronic areas are that you have a tendency to, to, to put your tension. So in my style of yoga, the stretches, the breathing, the bodily awareness all help us to let go of whatever mental and emotional stress that we may have accumulated in our bodies. So we breathe in attention inwards. And as we breathe out, we have an opportunity to let go. Every chance we ex every time we exhale, it's another chance to let go, go of tension and stress that we have identified with and stored in our bodies. So take a nice deep breath in, hold that breath for just a moment, and then we'll exhale with a sigh. Let's see if you can feel that relaxation response that occurs with a deep exhalation. Again, take a nice deep breath in. 
hold the breath for just a moment and exhale with a sigh. <sighs> okay, come on. I, I, I know I can't hear the people on the internet, but I should be able to hear you guys. Come on. One more time. You get one more chance. Take a breath in and let it go. <sighs> That's better. Now with your next inhalation, reaching up through the crown of the head. See if you can feel your neck lengthen up out of the shoulders. And then exhaling, we drop the right ear over to the right shoulder. And let the ear settle towards the shoulder. Let the shoulder settle towards the ground as you press lightly down through the left elbow. Feel that stretch along the left side of the neck. And then inhale, bring the head back up. And then same thing, exhaling, left ear to left shoulder. Press down through the right elbow. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale one more time, right ear to right shoulder. And then rock your head a little bit forwards and back. And let the movement help you to fine tune where the stretch is showing up. Feel any little glitches or hitches or places where there's discomfort or tension that restricts your movement. Go back and forth in a gentle way over those areas. Be conscious and slow in your movement. Now inhale allowing the head to come back up to center and exhale dropping left ear to left shoulder one more time and again that same action of head tilting a little bit forwards and a little bit back pressing lightly down through the right elbow to enhance the stretch along the right side of the neck maybe appreciating a few little clicks or pops as the neck opens up Now, inhale, bring yourself back up to center, and this time we'll drop the chin to the throat and float the back of the hands up to the back of the head, or float the, hand, the palms up to the back of the head. Letting the weight of the arms now rest onto the back of the head, feel that additional stretch in the neck. On an inhalation, we begin to lift the head turning the face upwards, press the elbows back, and take a couple of nice deep breaths into the upper chest. Feel yourself opening up the upper chest and the heart and the lungs. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, we gradually begin to come forwards, tucking the chin, rounding the spine, draw the belly in and blow all of your breath out, inhale and bring it up, and exhale and round down and go back and forth now, matching your movement and your breath. Now, inhale, bring it up. Take a deep breath in, and as we exhale this time, we're gonna turn lightly towards the right. And see if you can keep your nose pretty much over your chest. So this is more of a torso rotation. We wanna see if we can rotate the rib cage. Inhale. Exhale, just let yourself release back to center. Inhale, lengthen up, and exhale, rotate the torso. See if you can get a little bit more rotation by bringing the left ribs back, right ribs forwards a little. Nice spinal twist for the middle, middle spine. 
take a breath in, and then exhale and slowly release back. Ah. Now we'll lengthen the arms up overhead, turn the palms towards the sky or the ceiling. Stretching open the palms, the fingers, the wrists. See if you can lift yourself up out of the waist, reach the arms up out of the shoulders, take a breath in. And then exhale, lightly let the weight shift into the right buttock as you arch over in that direction, pressing up and across with the heel of the left hand. And then inhale, bring it back up to center. And exhale, other side. Keep the chin lifted so that the ears stay more or less in line with the shoulders. Inhale it up. And exhale, release the hands now, sweeping them around to the lower back. We'll clasp the hands once again, interlacing the fingers and pressing knuckles down towards the ground behind you. Feel the shoulder blades squeezing together. Inhale, lift the chin and the chest. Feel that openness in the throat. Now, drop the chin over the throat and just slide the chin back and forth from one side to the other a few times and feel that massage that the front of the, back, the, front of the throat gets against the underside of the chin. And then inhale, come up. And exhale now, keeping the chin lifted, we're gonna raise the arms up behind us and come forwards with the torso, the chin leading. And then come as far forward as you can and relax the head and the neck. Just let the head hang from the shoulders. Let the head shift and dangle a little bit from one side to the other. And then inhale and bring it back up to center. Release the hands and just take a moment to tune into the sensations in the arms as they return back around in front. And just pause for a moment and feel. Notice how the arms, the neck, the shoulders, and the upper back feel right now after those various movements. Okay, and now we can begin to extend the legs, if they weren't already. Rocking the legs a little bit from side to side, jogging the knees. And now from here, we'll extend the right leg out at about a 45 degree angle while drawing the left heel into the groin. Okay, so we've got kind of a V between the thighs. We'll inhale and bring the arms out to shoulder height. And then rotating so that your nose is pointing towards the left knee. And your arms are now parallel to the right leg. We place the, right, the back of the right hand on the ground just inside the right knee. And then we'll inhale and reach the left arm up next to the left ear and then slide that right arm along the inside of the right leg, continuing to reach through the left fingers. And breathe. See if you can slowly drop that right shoulder closest to the right thigh as you reach the right arm across or left arm across. And then inhale, reaching up through that left arm, allow it to draw the torso back up to center. And then we'll reverse. We'll re reach out with the left leg, bring the right knee 
So we're going to bend the right knee and bring the right heel into the groin, right up against the pubic bone. Once again, the arms out to the sides. Press out through that left heel. Leg is active. We're drawing the toes back towards the head. Now a slight rotation to the right brings the arms parallel to the left leg. Take a breath in. Exhale, we're gonna drop that left, back of the left hand onto the ground inside the left knee. And then inhale, reach that right arm up and over and across. Ultimately, some people, when they come into the full expression of the pose, are able to touch the toes on the opposite foot. Now, I'm not <laughs> suggesting that you have to do that, but just as a just as a reference of how the, the the posture progresses as we become more flexible, it's nice to know to have the end point in mind, even though your body may not be able to get there today. See if you can roll the right rib cage back a little bit, and if you choose. You can even look up at that left bicep, or right bicep, excuse me. Take a couple of deep breaths. As you exhale, perhaps settle you a little bit more into the pose. Let your attention be wherever the sensations are strong. And breathe into those areas. See if you can ride your edge. Come up against the limitation back off a little bit, take a breath in, and then exhale and see if you can ease past that resistance. And then with the next inhalation, we reach up through the right arm. It draws the torso back up to center. And we release the arm down. Extending the right leg now, so both legs are out at an angle. Place the hands on the ground in front, and we'll slowly begin to walk the hands forwards between the legs, and begin to reach. You can even imagine that you had fig that you had suction cups on your fingertips that were able to draw your torso a little bit further forward. So now, see if you can keep the legs active here, lightly pressing down through the back of the knees and draw the toes back towards the head. And once again, we'll take a few deep breaths. And with each exhalation, perhaps relaxing a little bit more into the pose, but more is not necessarily better. Wherever you're at is just fine. Breathing, relaxing, tuning into sensations. Let this be a communion with your body. And now we'll walk the hands gently in, slowly bringing the torso back upright. Cool. Now, we'll bend the knees and bring the left heel and then the right heel in, and we'll bring the soles of the feet together. And then interlacing the fingers around the toes, we press down through the outer knees. And just press and release a few times, opening up the inner thighs. Notice how that feels to engage the muscles on the outer thighs that help to draw the outer knees down. So pressing two more times. Then we'll lengthen up, keep pressing down through the outer knees, lengthen the torso up. Think about lifting the belly up. And now as you exhale, we begin to come forwards over the feet. Leading with the chin, try and keep the spine as straight as possible. And once again, you'll come up against an edge at some point. And then breathe and relax there. We 
in yoga, we don't want to be violent with our bodies. Too often in here in the United States, exercise involves violence to the body. Here, we're trying to build a friendship. We come up against those, those problematic areas and we gently breathe and apply our effort into the area in a loving way. And then inhale, bring yourself back up to center. And then bring the hands around to the outer knees. Use the hands to press the knees close and then extend the legs. And once again, we're gonna rock the legs a little bit from side to side and jog the knees. And notice they probably feel a heck of a lot looser than when we first did this a few minutes ago when we just came out of the, the, the sitting post, uh, position initially. So a thought came to me, you know, I, I, I've been medical massage therapist for almost three decades. And sometimes we have tight muscles in the body or an injury or something or other. I'm treating someone and, they, and they've got a really nasty muscle spasm or something. In my mind, I think that muscle is like an angry child. You know, it doesn't need to be beaten. It needs to be coaxed. It needs to be soothed. Now, some of that involves some pressure at all, but but that's a much better way to look at problem areas of your body, yeah. is, is with that compassion and, and with with consciousness. You know, again, in, in the West, people exercise while, while they're watching the news or working or whatever, and there's that disconnect between mind and body again. I have numerous people, numerous patients that have now workout equipment at home, and they start working out while they're working and an hour and a half goes along, or two hours, and they've been on a, a extra cycle or rowing machine, whatever, for that time, and now their bodies are injured because they were busy working while their bodies were working. Nobody was minding the store, uh, what was happening to the body. So, so in any case, when we go through this, this is a conscious experience. Okay, let's transition now onto our hands and knees. Okay, hands and knees. Hands are right underneath the shoulders. The knees are right underneath the hips. Hopefully I'm in a good frame there, yep. Okay, take a deep breath in, and we'll exhale into cat pose, where the middle back presses up towards the sky as the chin and the tailbone tuck under. And then into cow pose, where we lift the head, lift the tailbone, and drop the belly. Breathe in, and breathe out, curl under, and inhale, arch up. So, of course, this is similar to what we did when we were in the seated, seated position with the hands behind the head. But now, of course, we can use we can move the pelvis as well. So see how this feels in the lower back, the hips, the buttocks. And if you can, get a sense of the spine as a whole unit, from the crown of the head all the way down to the tailbone. See if you can begin the lift. We're in a we're in the rounded position. See if you can begin your lift by raising the tailbone and letting that action work its way up the spine and then the head comes up. And then likewise, see if you can tuck the tailbone and allow that rounding to move its way up and then the head tucks last. So doing that a few times, letting the tailbone lead 
could see if you could feel that wave of action moving up and down the spinal column. One more time each way. And then back to neutral. And we'll step the right foot forward between the hands and place the right hand on the right knee. Take a breath in. And then pressing into that hand, we'll turn to look up. And then turning back and raising the left hand up onto the back of the right hand now. See if you can curl your toes, the left toes under. And then lift that left knee up, coming into a lunge. Pressing back the left heel, nice long left leg and bring the torso upright. Make sure that your knee is directed straight forwards over the middle toe, don't allow it to turn in or out. Take a breath in, and as we exhale now, we're gonna come forwards, bring the, the torso over the thigh, and then bring the hands down on the ground either side of that right foot, and then begin to straighten the right leg. Dropping the forehead towards the shin, Getting a nice stretch in the leg. Let your hips shift a little bit from side to side. And then we'll bend that right knee once again, bring it over the right ankle, shift your weight into your left palm, and then we'll raise that right arm up into the air. Beautiful. Very nice. If you'd like, you can look up at that upstretched arm. And then reach the arm back down on the ground outside that foot. We'll drop the left knee, uncurl the toes, and then straighten that right leg. Dropping forehead towards shin. Pointing through the right toes, pressing back through the right buttock. Feel the lengthening along the back and outer leg. Now draw the right toes towards the head. Same thing, different stretch, a little more action now in the calf muscle. And then we'll shift forwards and we'll take that leg straight back now straight out of the hip, pressing away with the toes, shift your weight into your right arm or your right hand, and then we'll reach that left arm forwards and look at the fingernails. Pressing the left fingertips and the right toes in opposite directions. Engage the abdominal muscles, see if you can draw your belly in a little bit. And then drop the arm and the leg. We'll repeat that on the other side. So now we step the left foot forwards between the hands. The left hand is going to come up onto the top of the left knee. Inhale, pressing forward through the crown of the head, and then exhale, turn to look up to the left. You can press lightly through that hand, but we don't want it to be a forceful action. and then we turn back to face forwards. We'll bring the right hand on top of the left hand. Curl the right toes under. Now, make sure that your right foot is hip, that, make sure that there's a hips width distance between the right foot and the left foot. Because if one foot's right in, in front of the other, you're, you're gonna have problems with balance. So make sure you've got that separation side to side between the feet. Now, left hand on knee, right hand on knee, press down through that left foot, shifting your weight forwards to raise the right knee. Um, yeah, right knee. And then press back 
through that right heel, bring the torso up, and see if you can sit the sits bones down between the leg in this lunge. And then bring the torso forwards over the thigh. Hands are down either side of the foot. Take a breath in. As you exhale, drop the shin. I mean, drop, drop the forehead towards the shin as you press the toes into the ground and lift the buttocks up. Shifting the weight a little bit from side to side. And then we'll come forwards once again, bending that right knee, or left knee. We drop the weight into the right hand. We'll raise that left arm up. Looking up at the upstretched arm, pressing back through the right heel, pressing forward through the crown of the head. Dropping the left arm down. Drop the right knee, uncurl the right toes. And now we press that left buttock back towards the right heel. Pressing down through the left toes. Feel the stretch in that leg. Now draw the toes towards the head. And then we come forwards. And we'll draw that left leg straight back. Settle the weight into the left hand right underneath that left shoulder. And then reach forwards through the right arm. Right fingers and left toes turning in opposite directions, or right reaching in opposite directions. And again, a little bit of abdominal engagement. Lifting through the navel. and then release the hand, release the knee down, and we'll press the buttocks back into a child's pose, bringing some separation between the knees as the buttocks go to the heels. And then bringing the forehead down to the ground, you can either make a little pillow, or you can bring the forehead all the way down to the, the ground and have the arms on either side of the body. Take some deep breaths into the lower back. Just pause to integrate the movements that we just did for the lower body. Now, once again into our table position hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Spread the fingers nice and wide. Get your middle finger pointed straight ahead and the thumbs pointed in towards each other. Toes tuck under, take a breath in, and we'll come into our downward facing dog pose by lifting the buttocks up and away from the hands, reaching the pelvis away from the ribs, opening up the underarms, and turning the elbows slightly out and down. If you'd like, you can alternate pressing more into one heel and then the other. Now, bring the torso forwards into a plank position where the body is straight. The back of the head, the back, the buttocks, and the legs. You can even look down at your torso to verify that. Take a breath in. And as you exhale now, we're going to drop the knees and bring the chest forwards through the arms. 
and then inhale and look up. Feel that delicious stretch in the front of the body, dropping through the pelvis. Take a breath in, curl the toes under, and once again, downward facing dog. Pressing buttocks up and away. Now, shifting your weight into the left leg, left foot, we're going to raise the right leg up in three-legged dog. Now, see if you can keep the hips level. Try not to raise that right hip, just the right leg. And point through those toes. And then drop that leg, foot comes down. And then same thing on the other side, left leg reaches up, point through the toes, see if you can roll the outer left hip down. Now take a deep, deep breath in, and as you exhale, we're going to bend that left knee and slide it all the way forwards between the hands. Good. So left knee forward between the hands, lengthen that right leg back, and then just shift your weight a little bit from side to side and see how this feels in that left buttock and hip. And we want the knee out in front of us more or less. And we can bring that left foot now out towards the right to increase the intensity in that stretch in the left hip. Good. And then bring the torso upright. Breathe. And then see if you can walk your hands forwards and lower the torso over the knee rocking gently a little bit side to side, opening up that outer left thigh, the iliotibial band. And then we'll walk the hands in and place them on either side of that knee and we tent the hands. That is, we're pressing down through the fingertips and lifting through the palms we tuck the elbows against the sides of the body and we press forward through that right hip and breathe. Inhaling, we lift the front of the torso, look upright, Kapotasana, pigeon pose. This is a marvelous stretch for a very tricky muscle called the psoas muscle. Deep in the belly, all the way down to the thigh. And then we'll drop back down onto the hands and we'll send that left leg back. Once again, tabletop position, curl the toes under, pressing up into downward facing dog. Pressing through, not just the heels of the hands, see if you can shift your weight to the base of the fingers. Let the fingers be actively gripping ground as you continue to press the sits bones up and away. Press the left heel, press the right heel. Roll the elbows out. See if the chest can travel a little bit closer towards the knees. Take a breath in. Exhale, we're gonna bring the torso forwards. Once again, plank pose. Nice straight line. Drop the pelvis, press the chest forward between the arms, lift the chin and the chest and look up. Tuck the toes under, take a breath in and exhaling once again, downward facing dog. And then we'll raise the right leg up into the air. 
bend the knee and we'll slide that right knee forward between the hands. Lower the left leg. And we'll bring that right foot over towards the left hip. Drop the pelvis. Good. Slide that left leg a little further back. <laughs> come back into a come back into a table position. I can, but my knees won't. Okay. I got knee replacements. And they, okay. They don't work. <laughs> Pressing back with that left foot, drop the left hip, and inhale, lifting the chin and the chest. We'll tent the fingers briefly, and then we'll wall, we'll let the torso come forward over the leg. Let yourself shift a little bit from side to side. You may feel a really nice massage in the buttock. This is a great stretch for the piriformis muscle, another very tricky muscle. This one in the buttocks that often contributes to sciatica complaints. In many ways, the psoas and the piriformis are a, are a pair, are paired in movement. And then we'll walk the hands in either side of that knee, pressing down through the fingertips, lifting the palms, Tuck the elbows in and down against the ribs. Lift the front of the torso. Press forwards to that left hip. Chin, chest, hip bones facing forwards. And then we'll come down on the palms again and gently extend that leg straight back. All right, and from here, we're gonna come down onto our backs with the knees bent. And just pause for a moment on your back. Now, bring your feet in so that they are about hip width apart and very close to the buttocks. In fact, you can even reach your fingertips of one hand down and, if you, and, and bring the heel to the tip of the middle finger, first on one side and then on the other side. It's a good little measurement for the starting position. We're gonna move into bridge pose in a moment. Take a breath in. As you exhale now, press down through the buttocks and begin to lift the pelvis. Lift it up and then lower it down. And we'll do this a few times. And again, remember the action that we had in uh, the cat-cow position where we had that sort of wave-like action going up and down the spine, initiated with the tailbone. So we're gonna do that same kind of thing. Slowly lifting and lowering the pelvis and lower back. And here you can really have the opportunity to, to feel each of the vertebrae as they lift and lower. Ideally, they're moving independently of each other and not moving in clumps. So if you can visualize your spine sort of like a string of pearls lifting and lowering off of a countertop. And now this time we're gonna lift fully, pressing into the feet. We'll bring the arms underneath the upper body and then clasp the hands. See if you can walk one shoulder under, then the other shoulder, bring the palms together, interlace the fingers. 
and then engage the buttock muscles, pressing up through the hip bones as you simultaneously press back, I'm sorry, press down through the triceps. Lifting the tailbone, lifting the pubic bone. Nice firm thighs. Again, a sense of the knees pressing out over the feet. And breathe. Feel the openness in the heart and lungs. It's a great lower back strengthener. Great one you can do at home. You can just hold for a brief period of time in an isometric exercise. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale. First, we separate the shoulders, spreading them apart, lowering the upper spine. And then little by little, the spine comes down through the middle back, lower back, and then the sacrum and buttocks. Pause for a moment to feel that release. Now, we'll lengthen the left leg and draw the right knee up towards the chest, interlacing the fingers around the shin. Press out through the left heel, press out through the right heel. Draw both sets of toes back towards the head. And using a light effort in the arms, see if you can bring your thigh into a little bit closer contact with the right side of the abdomen and then send your breath down into the belly. So a deep inhalation presses the, or, or causes the belly to expand and the thigh to move outwards a little bit. And then as you exhale, we use the arms to draw the knee in a little bit. But the idea here is to take nice deep belly breaths, creating a little bit of internal pressure that then helps to massage the abdominal organs. Take a breath in, and as you exhale now, press down through the lower back, draw the navel inwards, and roll the nose up to meet your right knee. And hold for a couple of shallower breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out and slowly release down. Lengthen the right leg. And we'll repeat on the other side. So now we draw the left knee up, interlace the fingers, draw the knee inwards, toes drawn back towards the head. And again, some deep abdominal breath. Keep the legs active. In this lower position, you can also lengthen the back of the neck, keeping the chin tucked. Take a breath in. And on an exhalation now, we engage the abdominal muscles, press down through the lower back, and draw nose to knee. Breath in, and then exhale, slowly lower it down. Keep the knee bent, however. We're gonna bring that foot, the left foot, on the ground right near the left buttock. We'll bring the arms out into a T position at shoulder height, palms on the ground. Now, we're gonna press down through that left foot and lift the buttocks up away from the ground and then we shift the buttocks over to the left so that the inner right thigh presses against that inner left ankle and then drop the buttocks down. So the effect is having, we've shifted the pelvis two or three inches over to the left. Now the left foot comes up onto the right thigh or knee. Take a breath in. And as you exhale now, begin to roll your right your left knee towards the right hand. You can even reach the right hand up to apply just a little bit of weight, a gentle coaxing action. 
can bring it up to the outer knee or thigh, and then turning the head to look all the way left over the left arm. So the, right, the left knee is traveling towards the right as the head turns to look left. And breathe into that delicious stretch in the lower back, the hip, the buttock perhaps. And you can make little tiny adjustments by raising or lowering the knee just a little bit or pressing it further over to the side or less so that you can really focus the stretch right where you need it and right at the intensity level that is appropriate for you. Little micro movements. And then we'll inhale and draw the knee and head back up to center. And then we'll lengthen out through that left leg. Take a moment to realign legs, pelvis, torso, and head. Now we bend the right knee, placing the right foot on the ground right near the right buttock. Press the foot down, lift the pelvis up, and then we'll, shoot the, we'll shift the pelvis over to the right a few inches and down. And now the right foot comes up onto the left knee. Take a breath in. And as you exhale now, we're gonna roll the knee over towards the left hand. We turn the head to look over the right arm. And the left hand can come up to the right thigh or knee and gently occur, encourage that knee to come across. But we want to keep that right shoulder blade down. So if you find your shoulder lifting up off the ground, come back a little bit. Keep reaching those right fingertips out to the right, arm on the ground. And of course the head looking over that right arm. And breathe into the stretch using micro movements to really personalize the intensity of the location. Two more deep breaths. And then inhale and draw the knee and the head back up to center. Uh, lengthen the right leg out. And then we'll realign the torso, legs, pelvis, head, and bring the arms down next to the sides of the body. And we'll spend the next few minutes in deep relaxation. Feel your body resting down against the ground or the floor. Take a deep breath in. Hold it for a moment. And then exhale, let go with a sigh. And feel your body melt down into the ground. And again, another deep breath in. Hold it for a moment. Exhale with a sigh. Relaxing even more. And one more time, deep breath in. Hold the breath for a moment. Exhale with a sigh. Ah. Letting go completely. Relax the muscles of your face. Let your forehead smooth out. Relax the temples. 
relaxing the little muscles around the eyes so that the, even the eyeballs fall back into the eye sockets. Relax the jaw. Relax your tongue so that it settles a little bit more into the back of the mouth. Soften the throat. Relax your shoulders. Feel the heaviness of the arm. Let your chest relax and allow your heart to be fully open. Relax the belly and imagine your abdominal organs settling more towards the ground, more towards the back of the body. Relax the hips and pelvis. And feel how heavy your legs and feet are. And for the next few minutes, there's nothing that you need to do. There's no agenda, nothing to accomplish. This is your opportunity to just be, to breathe, to relax, to put down anything that you've been carrying around with yourself. Any bad stuff or unpleasantness, let it go. And even letting go of the good stuff. Just put it all down right now. And let yourself just be.
now bringing your awareness back to your breath. And starting to bring small movements into your fingers and toes. Allow your head to rock a little bit from side to side. And then gradually draw your knees up towards your chest. And then rocking from side to side. And gradually you're ready, coming up into a seated position. And then just notice how you feel. Take in this moment and the effects that our process has had on your mind, body, and emotions. Take in the sound and the surf. Feel the relaxation in the body. The softness of the breath. And the quiet of the mind. And then lastly, as a way of closing, Take a nice deep breath in and out. And then I'll ask you to join me in chanting the sacred sound of Om. Inhaling together. Om. Namaste, y'all. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. And namaste to all of you internet yogis and yoginis out there. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook and you saw the live stream last week, we got cut off. Uh, that whole class uh, is available on my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to reach out to me, you can do so through my website, sanibelwellness.com. Thanks very much. Namaste, y'all.